Volkswagen built its reputation in the US by building economical small cars that were typically fun to drive or interesting to look at with the occasional hot hatch or diesel drinker thrown in. The company's latest model, this three-row Atlas SUV, is none of those things. Instead, it's an American-sized version of the same styling and technology that have made Volkswagen products so popular the world over. How does it look? The high, squared-off character lines that go over the wheel arches make the body side seem both slabby and almost cartoonish to me, like the SUV is trying a little too hard to look rugged. Generally speaking, Atlas doesn't carry some of the softer, understated good looks of the smaller entries in the Volkswagen lineup. Some of the exterior details, like the lighting elements, are quite cool, but overall this just doesn't come together for me. How's the storage? So this is a big SUV. I'm not at all surprised that we can get all of our bags from away in the back. More impressively though, it's got nearly 97 cubic feet of space, which makes it about 10 cubic feet bigger than some of its main rivals. Driver and passenger have loads of storage, with a roomy bin under the armrest, a deep pocket for phones and such in front of the gear lever, and a wide bin with a grippy, rubberized surface on the dash for odds and ends. Second and third row passengers get smallish cup holders and a few odd bins, but nothing spectacular. Is it roomy? Room is plentiful in the first two rows. Headroom up front is especially ample, which is surprising with the big sunroof overhead. And I love that the second row seats slide forward and back and recline. The third row should be adequate for big kids or small adults, but it's not as generous as the segment leading Ford Explorer. How does the interior feel? You know what, actually, other than these really big pieces of metal and wood interior trim and the big touchscreen in the middle here, I kind of feel like this could be any other Volkswagen interior. The seats, the shifter, and the steering wheel seem as though they could have come from a Golf or a Passat. Is it well equipped? The SEL Premium is equipped with about every feature you should expect from a $50,000 SUV. Three zone climate control with front seats that are heated and cooled and heated second row seats too. Cameras and sensors allow for safety features like adaptive cruise control, a 360 degree camera for parking, forward collision warning, blind spot monitoring, and even an auto park system. And of course, there are the typical amenities you'd expect from a top trim vehicle, like big 20 inch wheels, leather everywhere, and a bright, good looking, all digital instrument cluster. How's the infotainment system? This Atlas is equipped with the Volkswagen version of the virtual cockpit system that I've loved in Audis for a while now. That means that not only is the central touchscreen easy to use with fast, responsive software, but the instrument cluster is amongst the best out there. It's an all-digital 12.3-inch display that is configurable and really gives me all the info I need front and center. VW has also gotten the basic stuff right. Easy to use radio controls with physical knobs for tuning and volume and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration. Is it a good daily driver? So I've got to say right off the bat that at a basic level, the Volkswagen Atlas is a good daily driver. It's comfortable, it's quiet, and it's full of amenities, especially in this SEL trim level. One thing that I was really surprised at after looking at it is that the wind noise on the highway is much lower than expected. This thing looks like a brick, but actually the wind noise at you know, 75, 80 miles an hour is, is pretty low. But now let me pick a few complaints. One is that I do not love the laziness of this eight-speed automatic transmission. Yeah, I can move it over into sport mode if I wanna accelerate around somebody or if I'm really getting onto an on-ramp, but left to its own devices, it seems to think about it a lot and really makes the acceleration experience a little bit weak. Is it fun to drive? 
So there's a 3.6 liter V6 under the hood here and it's making 276 horsepower and 266 pound-feet of torque routed through this 8-speed automatic transmission that I've already complained about a little bit. That's more than enough power for this vehicle. In fact, they're going to make it with a 2-liter turbo uh, which will have less power and probably better fuel economy admittedly, so this is the fast one if you wanted to get it. That being said, a lot of times Volkswagens are exciting in their segments because they're the sportier option and this Atlas just doesn't feel that sporty. Sure, I might be holding on to this thin rim steering wheel that kind of feels like it could have come out of a GTI, but the steering itself is sort of sloppy. Uh, you know, there's the typical body roll that you'd expect from an SUV of this size in corners, and there's nothing that really feels particularly engaging. Is that a big surprise? No, but I guess I was kind of hoping that maybe the Volkswagen SUV driving experience would be a little bit more fun. How's the fuel economy? My test vehicle has the optional 3.6 liter V6 and all wheel drive, and it's a little thirsty as a result. EPA ratings of 23 miles per gallon highway and 17th city don't match up well to the V6 all wheel drive Toyota Highlander, for instance, which gets 27 on the highway and 20 around town. Volkswagen will offer a 2.0 T and front wheel drive that will ultimately be a bit more frugal, I'd guess. How much is it? This is the full fat Atlas SEL Premium with 4 motion and it's not cheap. With no options and a $925 destination fee, it comes out to $49,415. It's fair to bear in mind that you can have it in base S trim, still with 4 motion in the 6 cylinder, for just under $35,000 though. Overall, Volkswagen seems priced just a bit higher than the segment, even before you factor in incentives. What are the negatives? As the new kid on the block, it's going to be hard for Volkswagen to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with superpowers in the segment like the Ford Explorer and Toyota Highlander without having one killer feature to really set itself apart. And for a three-row vehicle, frankly, the third row could be a little bit bigger. Who should buy it? First and foremost, there are lots of VW fans out there who will appreciate staying in the family when shopping for a family-sized vehicle. Furthermore, this is distinctive Volkswagen styling with plenty of room for all of your things and all of your people. Hey everybody, thanks again for tuning in to a Why Buy, and if you have a question or comment, please feel inclined to leave it for us below. We'd love for you to subscribe to our channel, and you can look for us on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and at MotorOne.com.